In this video, we're going to talk about reading in lines from a text file. We're going to talk about two new functions and then how you can use them in order to access data that's already in a text file. So before we talk about actually reading in lines from a text file, first we have to discuss like why can text files even show data on different lines, right? You probably never stopped and thought about that. Like why, why is this word howdy on a different line from this other word there? Like, why is that even happening? Why can your computer do that? Um, and so if you're a normal person and you've never thought about this, um, the reason why this happens is that every time when you press the enter key, this is leaving behind an invisible character inside of your file that's telling your computer that when this is displayed, I want you to display the next thing on a different line. And we call this the new line character. And so every time you, um, press the enter key, what's happening is your computer is leaving back an invisible character, which is a backslash n, okay? Depending on your computer, if you have a PC, this will be two different things, like a backslash and an n, it'll be length two. If you have a Mac, it's length one, um, it's called a carriage return, same thing. But when you press enter, you are leaving behind this invisible character. You can't see it, but your computer can. And so suppose I had this file here, right? So I have howdy there and then a blank line and then partner, okay? Um, the question then becomes, which lines have invisible new line characters? And so if we look at the first line, if we ask ourselves, does this have a new line character? The answer is yes, right? Because you can imagine we were typing this out, you type in howdy, then you press enter and you go into the next line. So sitting here is an invisible backslash n. On the next one, there's also a backslash n, right? Because there's a new line after that. On the next one, even though it's an empty line, right, it's still, there is, still is um, a backslash in there because we're moving on to the next line from the next word. And then lastly, on this last line, it does not have a backslash in. The reason why we know it doesn't have a backslash in is because if there was one, there would be an empty blank new line. An empty blank, that's redundant. There would be an empty line <laughs> right after the word partner, right? But in this case here, we only have four lines. So this does, the fourth line does not have a backslash in. And so because we're having these backslash ends in our file, this is causing different lines to show up or different words or different sentences to show up on different lines. And this will be very important when we talk about the next two functions. All right, so we've opened a file and now we want to start getting out all of the lines that are in the file. Um, and so in order to do this, there's two functions that can help and they are called f get l and f get s. So that, by the way, is an l, right? So I'll do like a little cursive l there. That's f get l, not, o, not f get one. Um, and so both of these functions will allow you to um, start retrieving lines from a file that you've opened with reading permissions. And so the syntax for these functions, they both take in the file handle that you had previously created that opened the file with reading permissions. So if I were to do something like f get l of the file handle that I've opened. Now what I get back is a line of text, okay? I get back something, um, the contents of, or one of the lines inside of my file. And so the cool thing about these functions is that every time you call fgl or fgets, you move on to the next line in your file. And so therefore the question becomes, so what's the difference between these two? Why do we have two different functions? And so f get l, I like to think of this l, I have no clue if this is actually right, but we're gonna say this is. The f get l, the l stands for loses. And what it's losing is the new line character. When you call f get l, you're going to read back a line in your file and it's going to remove the new line character if it was there. Um, f get s, the s stands for saves and it's saving the new line character. So if you call f get l or f get s, or so in this case here, if you call f get s, I mean, um, if the line has a backslash n or a new line character, it'll save it. If the line doesn't have a backslash n, it doesn't create it, it just won't contain that in the output. And so let's look at the difference between these two in this example here. So let's do some different columns. So let's say I had um, f get l in this column, cool, let's say I have f get s in this column, and let's say I had like a mixture of the two. Um, 
And so let's say I've already opened this file um, with reading permissions, right? So I would have some sort of f h is equal to f open. And let's say I have a variable called file that contains the uh, string of the file name. And so now I've opened the file. And so if I want to read in a line using fkdl, I then would say, um, let's say, let's call it line one, l1, will be fkdl of fh. Okay. And so I'm passing in that file handle that I've uh, created by opening this file with reading permissions. And so when I read in this first line, so when I call fkdl the first time, I'm reading in the first line. And so in this case here, this will become the string howdy. And so since I'm using fkdl, it's not going to contain the backslash n. So let's go back. So if we remember, this line has a backslash n, this one has a backslash n, this one has a backslash n, but the last one does not. And so when I call fkdl the first time, I'm reading in the first line, and therefore I'm getting it back without the backslash n. And so now if I call fkdl again, so I'm going to create a new variable called l2 for line 2, fkdl file handle. What I'm going to get back is the next line in the file. Every time you call fkdl or fkds, it moves on to the next line. Um, and so I would get back there. It's not going to have the backslash n. Notice here there are some threes in this in this word, but that's fine because everything inside of the text file is class char. So those are the character representations of the number three. And so let's move on. So let's say I am getting line three, which is f get l file handle. And so in this case here, this is kind of that empty line. Um, technically there is a backslash n in there, but since we're using f get l, we're not going to have that. So we're going to get back just an empty string. Okay. And then now if I do l4 f get l file handle, I'm going to get back that next line there, which is partner exclamation point and right and there was no backslash in on there in the first place but even even so since we're using fkdl it's not going to contain it and then now let's say i call fkdl again fkdl file handle okay i have no more lines in this file there's only four lines so if i call fkdl what's going to happen is it going to error and break all of matlab is it going to produce back nothing um, neither of those. Uh, when you reach the end of a file and you keep on calling fkl or fkds, what you get back is a negative one. And this negative one is class double. This is very important because you can imagine in the future, we will continuously be calling fkdl or fkds in a file over and over and over again. It will keep on getting back things that are class char. So we know we're done looking at a file when we get back something that's not class char. Um, and so cool, so that's using fkdl. And so what if we did the exact same thing with um, fkds? Oh, but before this, so like I said, um, when you're calling fkdl over and over and over again, you move on to the next line. There's no way that you can go back up a line. There's no way you can go back up one line, back up a couple of lines. You can't go back up at all. The only way that you can go back up in a file is if you close it and then reopen it again. So let's say, um, I don't know if I have room here, but Let's say at the end of this, I did f close file handle. So now I've closed this file, okay? And so now let's say in this next column, I'm reopening the file. So we'll say fh is equal to f open of that file, okay? Once again, file is a variable that contains the string of the file name. And so now I'll be able to start over again at the beginning. And so if I call l1, but this time using f get s of my file handle, right? This is my first line. And so I'm going to get back howdy. And this line contains a backslash n. So therefore, my function will output that line with the backslash n. It's saving the new line character. The next one, um, l2, I use f get s file handle. I will be getting back the next line, which is there. And this will also contain a backslash n, okay? And then file handle three, not file handle three, line three, um, fkds, 
file handle, right? And so this is that empty line, right? But technically, like I said before, there is that new line character. So I'm going to get back backslash n. Okay, and depending on your system, this will either be length two or length one, right? But that backslash n is contributing to the length of that line that we're getting back. And so let's continue on with all of the fun that we are having. Um, so f get s file handle. So this fourth one here, that fourth line does not contain a backslash n, right? And so when we use f get s, it's not going to just create one, okay? It's, it's gonna save it if it's there. But it's not there, so we're just going to get back partner. And it's not going to have the backslash n on there. And just like before, if we call f get s again, f get s again, okay, then I would get back a negative one that's class double, okay? And so the difference between these two is that f get l is losing the new line character, right? It's not keeping it. And f get s is saving the new line character. If it is there, it keeps it. Um, and so a lot of the times people will be a little bit confused about these two. Um, I don't really know the case where you would actually do this practically, but you can technically use f get l and f get s together. Um, and they'll both be referring to the same file if you're using the same file handle. Um, and so if I were to do a mixture of these two, um, oh, let's say I still close this, f close file handle, cool. So let's go up here. So let's say I open the file again. Uh, file, okay, my handwriting is degrading uh, even more than already it was. Um, so let's say I first call f get l on the first line. So let's say I say line one is f get l of the file handle, okay? In this case here, I would get back howdy. And it's not going to contain the backslash in because I'm using f get l. Now I can call line two and let's say I wanted to do it with f get s for whatever reason. It's moving on to the next line. It's not starting over again now that I'm using f get s. Okay? So line two in this case here would be there with the backslash n because I'm using f get s. Okay? And so I'm not going to do all the rest because it's going to be very similar. But um, you can use them both together in that sense. So once again, the difference between these two is that when you're using f get l, you are leaving the new line character. You're losing the new line character if it's there. If you're using fgetus, you're saving it. And so subsequently calling these functions over and over and over again allows you to read through every single line in a file until you reach the end of the file and therefore you get back a negative one that is class double.